Okay. Research questions. Um, all research begins with a question derived from a general topic that really is interesting to you. You have to be interested in, s in the thing, in the research you're going to work with, because you're going to spend like, I don't know, how many months, how many years researching. So unless it's very, very interesting to you, you might end up getting bored in the middle of the way. So you have to think of something that is really, really interesting. What should the research question have? It should have some key words and key phrases, definitely, uh, that can help you research your topic in a database or a search engine. We have a beautiful library here at Cairo University. So you need to have some keywords to start with in order to start your search engine, whether online or in the library. It sh should not have any hidden assumption. I'm, I'm going to give you those rules because we're going to apply them to some of the uh, to some questions that I have prepared. What is a hidden assumption? You should not have an answer in the question. Otherwise, what are you researching? So research questions should not have hidden assumptions. Another thing is that they should be measurable. You want to measure, all right? You want to measure to what extent, how far, and so on. A re research questions should be relevant. They should have a bearing on the topic. This is very important. They should, as, as we said before, interesting. So you need to choose a topic that, is, that stimulates and sparks your thoughts and opinion, because this is what you're going to work with. And of course, so, also interesting to the professor that you're going to work with. You don't want him to be bored to death with a topic that he's not interested to work with you on. It should be focused. The question should not be too broad or too vague. And then we're again, we're going to see examples of too broad questions or too vague. And it should be researchable. Okay? It is recommended that you do a preliminary research to test if you can get enough material on, on your topic. And, in and you keep on, again, revising your question based on the material or the literature that you have found. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, a problem questions, and I want you to think, what is the problem with these questions? Okay, read these questions and tell me what's the problem uh, uh, based on what we have said previously. Does France have a nationalized healthcare system? I give you the answer. It is? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Is that measurable? Is that measurable? It's not measurable. What am I going to, to measure? It's a yes, no question. The same thing where, with when did D-Day begin during World War II? What is the answer to that? A date. So what research is that? So the, these questions are yes, no questions. And they can be answered by one word. So number one, we want to avoid yes, no questions because they are too narrow. You have a one word answer to them. Another problem, it cannot be covered in the scope of a research paper because it's too broad. And again, it's not measurable. Um, and it's, it's not focused. It's, not, it's too, too broad. Thank you. Other than it's a yes, no question, the word better. What does better mean? IBM or Apple better computer. It's hard to research and it's too challenging. We don't want to, again, think of too challenging questions. Now, formulating a research question. We want now to exercise, to, to, to practice how to move from the broad to the specific. When you come to formulate a question, think with, think in broad terms. Think in, first of all, with the research field. What am I want to investigate? Do I want to investigate in w which field? Psychology, economics, uh, philosophy. So what is the research field I'm interested in? And then I want to move from the broad to more specific. What, what area within this field that I want to research? So my broad field in that case, in that example, is psychology. But there are lots of things in psychology. We have child psychology, we have community psychology. So I'm interested in child psychology, not in counseling, for example, not in community psychology. Again, we can move further and specify it and narrow it down by thinking of two 
constructs that are measurable within that field or area. So I'm interested in sci child psychology and autism. Okay, I, I, this is how I move from the broad to the specific. I think big and then I, I narrow down, narrow, narrow it down. It's like holding a camera and zooming the camera until I get the angle that I want to, uh, to get. So I have two constructs here. I have sci child psychology and autism. So, but, but, but again, what in child psychology and autism? I want to narrow it down. How do I narrow a topic? Narrowing a topic, you can narrow it down by a particular aspect. Psychological, economic, pedagogical. You can narrow it down by dates, by a time period. Okay? You can narrow it down by a particular event. You want to investigate what happened in 9-11 or January 25th, uh, autism, child psychology started after the revolution. There are a lot of things that happened after the revolution. I don't know. Any, a particular event or a geographical area by gender, by age group. So these are things that you, items that you can use in order to move from the broad to the specific. 